Om. A few master meditation, simply because they find it difficult to enter into a meditative state in the first place. But if you can momentarily eradicate outside noise, you would give yourself a better chance to free your mind. Let's look into it. I can't switch off, you hear. Or, I'm not able. Or, it's just not for me. These are things I've heard so many times, many, many times. When people try to meditate, they told me these things, and okay, there might be different phrases or a different way of putting it, but essentially it's all negative towards meditation. And at this stage, I find it funny. And when I started hearing people saying things like this, I thought they were right. They were the one of the few who simply weren't able to immediately focus on, well, nothing. But then I thought about it and realized they were wrong. It's you, it's wrong. I, well, just give me another few minutes. Because, as it's not because they couldn't do it, rather, it's because they were unskilled at doing it. Because starting to meditate is not like starting to do a lot of things. And with many things you begin doing for the first time, you have to learn small habits that will allow you to enter into it easily when you do it every day. Does that make sense? And without these habits, because we need habits, you will get frustrated and trigger another part of your brain. And that will shut off your ability to, believe it or not, meditate. Now, if you are new to meditation, no that many, many people have difficulty starting off. But that doesn't mean you won't become great at it soon after you start. It can be done, and I hope at the end of this video it will be done for you. I can actually remember partaking in a workshop many years back where I, along with many co-workers, were being instructed into simple, basic, meditative practices. Now at the time I had been meditating for many years and I meditated that particular morning as well before I left for work, before I even knew that there was going to be this particular part of the workshop. Now in my mind I had predicted the people who'd find it difficult to start into meditation, the people that I'd work with. So you know I was having a little bit of a think about who's who and who's going to feel this in that way. And I got it right. I got it bang on. Because in big groups like that, where people have to do things for their work, they often follow the group because they want to be the, well, they don't want to be more so the odd one out. Who wants to be the odd one out? And effectively, they act as if they're open to the process. But in reality, they're a little freaked out by having to do it alone. And because you, or they, it's not you, have to do it in front of others, this can also cause further anxiety for them as well. Now, as we started the workshop, everyone took a seat while the instructor explained what the theory behind meditation was. Like a lecture, they pulled out a whiteboard and placed it at the front of the makeshift classroom. From there, they began to teach about how meditation worked and the benefits of it all. Now, there was no rocket science to their methodology. So everybody there, everybody that was at the workshop, sat and listened attentively. Well, so it seemed. But when it came to the practical application of the steps, that's when it became trouble for a few. 
as I revisited my earlier zen from that morning, my eyes became soft and my eyelids were heavy. I knew within moments I was entering into a great state of deep relaxation. And for me, the five minutes or so, this by I was eating, so they had about you know, just a couple of minutes. But by the time I opened my eyes and looked across at others in the room, others that were in the workshop, I noticed most of them poking or looking, touching, and certainly gazing up at the instructor for an answer as to what they should be feeling. Now, by the time I opened my eyes, I looked across the room and I could notice everybody else poking, looking around, touching their neighbour. And they were looking up to their instructor eventually to see how they should be feeling. And it seemed they had been diligent enough to partake in the exercise, but weren't sure as to what they were supposed to feel. Resembling a group of children who were told to keep quiet on a car journey while their parents got some peaceful sinking time to understand the map, the old-fashioned map in the front seat. They were now looking for entertainment as a reward for their time spent just being good brothers in the room. This was what I saw in the workshop as soon as I opened my eyes. And then there were a few who were kind of startled by the whole process. They looked around at others to see their reactions. And by looking about the room, they had smirks and like playful eyes, communicating how they couldn't believe that they'd been asked to do over the previous few minutes. They just, they were bamboozled by it all week. And after a while, a feedback session commenced and questions and answers were thrown out to the instructor. So everybody there just threw out random questions and such. And a couple of those who had been looking around the room immediately after their botched attempts to meditate explained how when they weren't able to meditate and they simply got nothing from the experience. The instructor listened as they grouped together to explain they were different types. The instructor grouped together as they explained how there were different types of people. Essentially, a lot of those people who were questioning got nothing from the experience, or so they said. The instructor listened though as they grouped together to explain well, they, there were different types of people and what the instructor had explained pre previous to the actual experiment, they were, well, they were them and the process was not made for them. So I sat there, I was really relaxed and I was watching as they showed their stressful state and their stressful state actually increased. Now, although I was spot on at predicting those that would find it difficult to understand and even more challenging to enter into, I was fascinated once again to see how they defended how they were wired differently from others and how it was impossible for them to become a meditator. Possible for them to do that whole process again. And in fairness, well, they would a compelling argument because the instructor was dumbfounded and had no real answer for them, believe it or not. So how could they be expected to meditate again? Because the instructor had followed their how to meditate notes and saw that at the very least uh, everyone in the group would have a good time uh, in feeling a sense of peace for a few minutes. So they'd hardly an argument built up and their points of the questioners didn't fit into the regular generalization of how everyone was an immediate 
meditator. They couldn't just put their finger on the answers. They couldn't get there. But the questioners did. And whatever peace was in the room, a few moments earlier was, I'll tell you, now gone and gone for all. The moral of this story is that starting into a successful meditation practice can take time. And if the instructor had said such, it would have got them out of a lot of problems. Now, although you can sit quietly for a few minutes every day and try to meditate, in reality, it can be just sitting there with your eyes closed without meditating. Every now and then, you check yourself, and perhaps look at the time, and then maybe open an eye, of course, and wondering how far you're into your initial five minutes of supposed meditation. If that's happening though, certainly you're not, not in a meditative space. Because to begin meditation, you first need to sit yourself down and list all the things you see that you are, and you know that, you feel even that you're struggling with on a given day. Then from there, you need to list the bigger stresses that are in the background of your life and pulling the strings of your, say, overall habits. For example, why are you working at what you're working at? Or what are your biggest financial pressures right now? Or, again, what relationship stresses have you got? Or do you have a relationship that's stretching, stressing? And what health worries have you? Now, if you can come to a point of temporary ease with these bigger questions, and they are big questions, then you need to find a day where you'll be able to start with it being completely uninterrupted. And from there, you can start to meditate alone. And from there, you're likely to truly enter a space of where you want to go with this journey into yourself. So, I hope you've got something from this video. And you can do that with your list yourself and nobody else. And then when you do, that list. You can let your worries go. Give it a whirl. So, if you've enjoyed the video, please subscribe. Until the next time, have a wonderful day.